all the world's genocides have been done by the worldwide pharaonic aristocracy and their Swiss Templar base, like the one against the Jews with the assistance of some helpful Germans, for instance. Pharaoh's main reason for this is the loss of control over his slaves, who, for instance, rediscover their national identity and consequently stop paying 50% taxes to these pharaonic parasites, of which I explain in my film, The Swiss Beast, Home of the Devil. So the Jews, the Russians, Waco, Texas, Jonestown, the Sun Templar sect in Switzerland, Lord Kitchener and Lord Winston Churchill murdering 28,000 Boer women and children in British concentration camps in South Africa for the very same reason of not accepting Pharaoh's control. Believe me, all genocides are being done by Pharaoh's worldwide nobility. They all paid the ultimate price for trying to live independently as a group or people under an identitarian hull and cutting themselves loose of the aristocracy's sphere of control, as in this case of the um, Armenians. You see, it says the caliph, the caliph, he did it. The 19th century is called the century of romantic nationalism, as for instance, political Zionism by Theodor Herzl, and very much the opposite of the other two Zionisms, like religious Zionism and the New World Order Zionism, which is the political Zionism infiltrated and taken over by Pharaoh, just as they did with National Socialism, Communism, or you name it. And the fact that nationalism happened simultaneously all over Europe means that some power ignited this all. Yes, the New World Order Templar Masons did so in order to end the Old World Order vertical rule of the primogenitor. Pharaoh's aristocracy lost all ground due to all kinds of national movements of ethnicities all over Europe trying to break loose from the aristocracy's control over his paying slaves, culminating into the death of the Archduke Franz Ferdinand of that immense pharaonic empire of Habsburg. He got killed by Serbian nationalists, thus leading to two world wars in which they nearly wiped us all out and replaced half of their disobedient European slaves with Muslims afterwards, who are far more obedient slaves and controllable because of their fatalist belief system. So the Turkish Caliphate of Pharaoh lasted 400 years, from 1517 to 1924 when the Caliph's Old World Order was replaced by the horizontal rule New World Order, centering the Turkish New World Order in a town called Ankara, from the pharaonic On Ka Ra, On for Cyrus, Ka for the Sol, and Ra, the Sun God, Amun Ra. So here you can see they're all one big family, they're all friends, like they are still today, and we have to fight each other, the peoples, just as they're pre preparing a big one now. So to the left you see the Emperor of Germany, William II. In the middle there's the, the Caliph of Turkey. And to the right is Franz Josef, uh, the Emperor of Germany. So, you know, preparing and organizing uh, World War One. And just before, in 19... The Caliph's political party of the Turkish aristocracy called the Young Turks, like the lion cubs of the Per A, came to power and immediately started to get rid of those disobedient slaves, genociding 30,000 Armenians in 1909. Thus, the Young Turks, trying to stop the inevitable New World Order for their Caliph, Old World Order Abdul Hamid, also called the Red Sultan, from Pharaoh's Old World Order, Pertasser, Red House, of course. 
That's why going back to the caliphate dreams for young Muslims wanting to join the Islamic State caliphate led by the Emir actually comes out of the same indoctrination propaganda as being a Knights Templar for white nationalists or as being Germanic during the Nazi dictatorship in Germany. And if you want to know why this guy here is so intelligent and so different from all the Turkish immigrants I've ever come across, well, without any doubt a direct descendant of the Caliph, as these genocide boys, the young Turks, in fact, from the very beginning were. So why do you think why he and his fellow operators here chose this name? Huh? You think this smart boy doesn't know? Well, if an intelligent man like that one picks out a name like the Young Turks, it's like writing on his forehead, I like genocides, let's have one more. Typical controlled opposition. And not a sim single glimpse of a doubt I have. I mean, having a YouTube channel called the Young Turks is like saying that Hitler did a fine job and Stalin too. Viva la genocida! Because when in the 19th century the Armenians in Russia wanted to get away from the Tsar, the Armenians in Turkey also tried to get away from their pharaoh caliph the Red Sultan, who had 200,000 Armenians and their children murdered from 1894 until 1896, and every time with the help of the Kurds, who gave Pharaoh a willing hand. And this all culminated into the big genocide from April 24th, 1915 to July 1st, 1916 killing one and a half million or two-thirds of the entire Armenian population. Only because the Caliph, the Sultan and Pharaoh's aristocracy were afraid of the people's nationalism from the 19th century. And which was in fact a movement ignited by the Templars, their worldwide Freemasons and their New World Order Oriental second third sons aristocracy, very much using the peoples and their nationalist ideas to topple the caliph and the rest of the old world order, just as they did in France during and through the revolution. You know, Armenians are like Jews who like to stick together in their ghettos, and Pharaoh just doesn't like that at all. Because how how are you going to control the ghetto where there's only them with their own laws and exchange of goods without taxes? Better get rid of them before it goes out of hand. And the entire empire becomes a big ghetto spreading like a wildfire with other ethnicities in the empire getting the same idea. Thus pharaoh aristocracy thinking. And here, neutral Switzerland of the Nazi Templars come into play. Because for a large-scale, modern-day industrial genocide, you need guns, and Turkey didn't produce at all. And with unstable Turkish money, which in those days you couldn't use anywhere else in the world except Turkey, so no guns manufacturer would accept that. So the Caliph had to set up a very stable Swiss bank account with hard guaranteed Swiss francs. So any industrial in the world would accept that kind of money. Mostly using Turkish commodities instead of Turkish cash for the obvious reasons to start the account set up. A system set up in Switzerland by the Knights Templars inventing the Czech and banks, knowing it's dangerous to transport useless money from the Orient for a crusader Templar, which, he had, which he'd like to spend in Europe anyway. So they agreed upon using a piece of paper with a seal with which he could get his, his salary or payment in the Swiss base. So you have to watch this film to understand everything what I'm telling you, because this is the base and I'm not repeating it all. Um, in the um, 
in this film about the uh, Armenian genocide. So this is what the uh, caliph did finally, perfectly knowing that he needed to collaborate with his worst enemy, the New World Order Templars and Freemasons, whose aim it was to get rid of both the Old World Order Caliph and the Armenian Nationalist Uprising in the end, which the New World Order used to topple the Caliph. So the Caliph went for the final solution in order to keep his throne from the New World Order threat and murdered almost the entire Armenian people. Only eight years later, in 1924, the New World Order won anyway and resulting into the Treaty of Lausanne of their Swiss base. So in fact, one and a half million Armenians died for only for gaining eight years. Eight years postponing the inevitable end of the Caliphate. Just as Jacques de Molay, the last Grand Master of the Templars in 1314 at the stakes could easily say that both the French King and the Pope would die within a year's time, which was not a bad spell, but just a reference to how powerful the New World Order potential of the Templars and the Freemason already was at that time.